Good morning. We are off to the East Anglia Yarn Festival. We've just stopped before getting onto the M25 to get some petrol. We are fully stocked up. So we are, we'll, uh, the East Anglia Yarn Festival is in Norfolk on the east south, on the east of England. We live in the very southeast in Kent and it's about a two and a bit hour drive two hours 15 minutes our tickets uh let us in at 11 it's currently 8 30 so we've got plenty of snacks for the uh journey there and back we've got m ms minstrels and fruit pastels so we'll survive the journey good morning morning Dan's here because he's coming to his first ever yarn festival how are you <laughs> feeling while I'm feeling tired at the minute but good you know this is good I'm excited about this I'm excited yes I'm for just... all the yarn or are you just excited to meet people I'm excited to meet people yeah so I'm just putting in our destination into the old no, it's the Nor is it the Norfolk showground? I thought it was the Norwich showground. You're it's right. The, it's the only showground. Yeah, I should. Seen as I grew up there, I know. <laughs> I, I, know. Should know. I shouldn't get involved, should I? So, right, let's go. Let's go. Coming past Wyndham, where Dan grew up. Oh, the arrival time's just gone up another two minutes. I know. Oh. Here we are at Norfolk Showground, which I nearly forgot to film, and Dan had to remind me. I mean, to be fair, it's just a, a road and a field at the moment. Can anyone see any yarn? Show parking, left. Thank you for swapping the sign. <laughs> Don't know what I would do without you. Hi Viz, I see Hi Viz ahead. Hi Viz, you know it's a proper show when there's Hi Viz man. Or woman. Person. Person. Individual. Indi human. Let us human. be a queue outside. We can see a queue of people looking very soggy and we both need a wee. We do, yes. Let's go. Let's go! This is exciting. Oh, oh look how huge it is. is. Yeah. I found Helen from Giddy Yard <laughs> and she's sponsoring the, the lanyards. We are, yes, yes, the podcaster lanyards if you're a podcaster. There you go. <laughs> and her stall is just here and I'll be looking at it in detail in a minute. <laughs> oh, and I also found Sophie from a spring snowflake, Flick Merrison, and Dan's having the time of his life already. <laughs> Sophie! Hello! From a spring snowflake is here. <laughs> I haven't made Randomly it into the show yet. I know. Well, we were, we, were, we were just warning Dan that um, it will take you the whole day to do just one lap. Because everyone's going to stop you. Apparently, Ellie is here oh, from the podcast. Yeah, yeah, she is. She was at the um, a Big Stitch Night in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Night. I'm, I'm going to find yeah, her. Yeah, no, go and find her. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, other podcasters. Hannah is down that way. Oh, oh corner, corner across. Corner across down that way. Uh, who else? <laughs> Um, we definitely Kelly Lady. Kelly is same uh, right against the wall over there. I'm going to start there then. Um, <laughs> oh, hi, Kate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too Don't many people. Buckle up, everyone. We're going in, passing Jeanette Sloan and the BIPOC in fibre stand there on the right. We headed straight to Pigment and Ply, run by the very creative Jess, a knitwear design graduate. Uh, the colours are inspired by her sketchbook. Uh, classical works of art and other things like that and I think you'll agree they are absolutely beautiful. All of the dyers, fenders and everyone that 
you see or that I talk about and the podcasters, I will link underneath as well as anything else I can think of in the description box underneath the video. So this is Weku Yarn. It's Hannah and Lydia, two London-based sisters. The name Weku means family in their dad's native language. Uh, and in my latest podcast, I actually shared two hats I made with their gorgeous Aaron weight yarn. Castle View Yarns is Jen. She dyes yarn in her home in Suffolk and she also sells accessories such as these gorgeous little labels. This was my first time seeing Jen at a yarn show and also meeting her because she has donated prizes uh, for the podcast before. So it was lovely to meet her in person. Her Moulin Rouge colours were beautiful. I really liked this deep red one. Skein and the Stitch, or Skein and the Stitch, depending on where you sit on that pronunciation, uh, is completely new to me. Jess is based in Yorkshire. She has a PhD in 18th century British literature. Her yarn, as you can see, is absolutely beautiful. And as usual, here I am going for the green skeins. Skeins. nice smoky these smelled just like a log fire they were beautiful the camel's yarn is hannah originally based in camelford in cornwall so her hand dyed yarn is very much inspired by cornwall which is lovely to see because we've had a few really lovely holidays along the camel trail in cornwall do excuse the plaster on my hand I cut it moving a wardrobe the day before and I've also got ink over my hand because I smudged the stamp I got on the way in. Ever the classy professional. The Crafty Bird is Robin from Wiltshire. She started off selling just glorious handmade pom-poms and then diversified and now dyes yarn as well and sells project bags. Do you need a pom-pom for your hat that you need? No, I'm all right. I loved this crochet sheep. Did try to steal it but was very swiftly caught and stopped. Just to warn you, the next couple of minutes may be a bit loud and giggly. Very exciting. Kelly Hello. Lay from Hi. Lay Family Yarns. Here's her stall. And Nick, Nick, there, up there. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. I'm there. Um, Hi. Kelly, I have known for years. Five years? Four years? More. It must be yeah. more because we've been Lay Family Yarn five. And I, I just, yeah, so at least five yeah. years and we've never, never met. met. And now we've met. And we've just ran at one another yeah. down, down the hall. I think we might have injured some people and pushed them out the way. No, and you're very all... soft as well. Oh, it's yeah. going cool. <laughs> that is nice. That is nice. What's that called? Sour apples. That's perfect, isn't it? I'll buy you a team, I'll buy you a scheme of yarn today for your dog. Yes, you should. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Come call Taz Magic! But the baby's not here. Where is he? He's around somewhere. Yeah, so... <laughs> he's he's doing, soaking himself yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing his warm-up. So, are you having a nice time? Lovely. I've, I've actually only bought two skeins of yarn just yet, but I'm sure that lots will get purchased soon. <laughs> I found Karen from Hello. Stitches and Jack's podcast. <laughs> so we've just been, to, and, I, and do you know what the pattern for your hat is? Oh no, I don't. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what the yarn is? It's um. I put you. I put yeah. you on the spot. Bird, Bird Street yarn. Ah, who, who and are they? It's a D, and it's a DK. Um, yeah. well, I can't remember the colour. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Looks <laughs> Love to um, put it on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bit of a fangirl moment here. It's the corner of Craft, who is lovely Hannah. She dyes the most gorgeous yarn. They're all inspired by Dungeons and Dragons, which I believe she's quite a big fan of, and they're all sparkly and lovely. And she also sells these incredibly intricate 
hand woven bead charms which she turns into stitch markers they're so clever I've watched her podcast for quite a few years now and yeah she's lovely make sure you check out her podcast on YouTube The Yarn Whisperer is Kaiti. I always love his stall when I spot it at yarn shows. The potting shed that he's got set up here showcases uh, beautiful green yarns for his and others crocheted terranium patterns. I just love that sign. This is his taro yarns. Don't they look lovely in that shawl? Uh, they're all on zebra based yarns. I haven't said that very well, but you know what I mean. Kaiti also sells these Mahusif 500 gram Guernsey five ply sport weight hanks. They're 1,250 metres. He dyes each one of them individually and they're perfect for making one of his supersized virus shawls, which is a pattern on his website. And a virus shawl is something that I have still yet to make. I was very tempted by this one. Sincerely Louise sells knitting patterns and kits inspired by taxidermy and she's also the author of a couple of knitting books as well. We absolutely loved the Loch Ness Monster of course, it was amazing. I've never been able to get in to film her stall before so I was really glad to find her and be able to have a look. The Yarn Badger, great name, I love that name is Liz and she dyes mainly amazing self-striping yarn as you can see here on her display. I think she's based in Sheffield. Really love this yellow one. We're getting chips. In the rain. But, um, yeah, it's lunchtime and we've only done one aisle of five. But we're getting chips. Worth the wait. <laughs> Delicious. You need a napkin, you can't go indoors like that. I was really looking forward to seeing the Pixie Yarn stand and it did not disappoint. Uh, Sophie is from Somerset, which is on the other side of England in the West, and her store was incredibly tempting, stuffed with the most gorgeous hand-dyed yarns. Sophie runs a monthly yarn club for 2023, inspired by uh, one of her childhood books illustrated by Brian Wildsmith, and I've linked the, her shop underneath, along with uh, all the other links as well. Fibre Workshop. A local vendor, Norfolk based Jen, was so lovely and interesting to talk to. She told us about the Norfolk corn sheep breed and how she dyes the plants, dyes the plants, grows the plants to dye the yarn. Her website is a really great read, so do make sure you click on it and go and have a look at her story. And Dan might have bought me my birthday gift here, which I shall show you later. I'll show you all the purchases I made at the end of the video. Another new to me vendor was Telling Yarns. Beth is based on her fourth generation family farm in Bedfordshire and she keeps sustainability at the very forefront of her business. It's another website actually with really great information uh, to read. I think most of her colours are inspired by literature and when I first saw them I thought they were naturally dyed. They're not but uh, they've got such a lovely soft palette of colours that they look really natural if that makes sense. Josie Rose UK is Joanna. She is local, based in Norwich, and she sells beautiful project bags and hand-dyed yarn. And I really like the project bags. Some of them really made me giggle, like these ones. Yeah. 
Jones and miss her. Passing travel knitter there. I'm just doing a 360. You're in my way. <laughs> and visiting the yarn dispensary, who, like me, are from Kent, uh, an award winning local yarn shop in Faversham. It's one of the oldest buildings in the town, based in, in an old pharmacy built before 1240. Uh, they run classes, they sell yarn, they sell notions, books, magazines, and even have online tutorials on their website. Basically, Kentish people are just awesome. <laughs> a question for you. Where would you find a Dalek at a yarn show? The answer, Temporal Spin. <laughs> Rianne is from Wales and she dyes yarn inspired by sci-fi, fantasy and pop culture. Psychedelic Bifrost. Yeah, the Bifrost is how they travel across different realms in, in the Marvel Universe from um, Thor's planet. Are you making that up or is that true? That's true. <laughs> That's what the Bifrost is. Dan explaining to me the meaning of psychedelic bifrost there and loving all the sci-fi references. I first saw Charmaine at the Wolfham Abbey Wall Show in January this year. She's a theatre maker, musician, artist and yarn dyer. She dyes her yarn and fibre on the riverbank by her houseboat, which must be real dedication. She said it can get very, very cold, but her yarn and the results are definitely worth it. They're beautiful, and she uses such lovely bases. And as I said at the last yarn show, she is definitely contender for best yarn label in show. Jackie at Hot Butter Yarns hand dyes yarn and produces the most intricate, beautiful colour work patterns. Jackie is a teacher of art, design, fashion and textiles and her expertise really, really shows. She has a studio in Skipton in Yorkshire. <laughs> Stitcher's Tees sell quirky bags, clothes and accessories to advertise your obsessions. <laughs> Stick an extra E in crocheteer. Crocheteer. Like a musketeer. <laughs> like a musketeer. I really wish I'd bought one of the bags. I really do. I need oh, I, I need a proper dedicated yarn show bag. Yarnivore. Maybe I'll order one online. I did buy a sticker and a badge. Vicky Brown Designs, yes, the Vicky Brown, crochet designer and crochet sock queen. Vicky also sells hand-dyed yarn and runs Stitches Tees that you've just seen with her sister. The colours are so vibrant and bright and fun. Artistically by Amber is from Surrey, selling yarn, patterns and accessories. We had a lot of fun browsing through the Buffy inspired colours especially. This was my first time seeing Cat and Sparrow Fibres and meeting Rachel who runs it. She very kindly spent some time chatting to me about my very slow drop spindling journey and even gave me some tips on what to do. Rachel sells hand dyed yarn, fibre, patterns, notions and 3D printed spindles as well as running one to one online drop spindle lessons. Interestingly, her business partner, who is still in Australia where Rachel used to live, also runs Cat and Sparrow Fibres over there. So it's a kind of both sides of the planet business. 
This gorgeous pattern really caught my eye. It's called Diaphanous Raglan by Jessie May, and these are the yarns that she used to make that particular version. It's definitely going in my Ravelry queue. Cool Woolings is another totally new to me vendor and her yarn just looks spectacular on this black background. Almost unreal. This was actually her second ever show. Absolutely beautiful. So bright, so vibrant. And we finally found our way back to the gorgeous Helen with help of Flick at Goody Yarns. Helen sells hand-dyed yarns heavily inspired by literature and she does these amazing gobstopper self-striping balls and I was in the market for one for my mum's birthday. Saying no more in case she's watching. You can see Hobbit inspired and Peter Rabbit inspired yarns here. Stephen King inspired mini pack here. Just browsing around, inhaling the yarn. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Henny Penny Makes is lovely Erin from Scotland. Her store was beautiful. I was so happy to meet Erin. We've talked a little bit on Instagram and she's also donated a prize for the podcast before. And I was also gifted some of her yarn. She's also a contender for best yarn label in show. Uh, with that chicken logo. Maybe I'm a bit biased, so. <laughs> she sells these gorgeous little mini bundles to go with the gnome patterns by Sarah Shearer. And there are links inside the, the ball band. And I will link underneath the patterns as well for these gorgeous gnomes. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. Next up was the dye shack, Naomi. She dyes yarn in her garden studio in Somerset, inspired by folklore, music, books and nature. Ugh, a girl after my own heart. Such a beautiful array of yarn. You can see me running here because <laughs> I spotted this one and it was right up my street. Ducky Darling's Yarns is the wonderful Hayley and her husband has now joined the business as well. Although I'm not sure, I, I couldn't find her husband's name anywhere. I'm very sorry. If you're watching Hayley, let me know because I know that you are officially a husband and wife team now. Beautiful yarn as ever. Simple Crafted Life is where I lost my heart to the idea of punch needling, something that I hadn't even thought about before, but it's just, look, it's just so cool, so tactile. It's run by Sarah Jane. She's originally from Gibraltar, but is now based in South East London. And she was one of two punch needle stalls at the show, but I only managed to film this one. I might have bought something as well. Pippin Yarns is another Kent-based vendor. I first found Emma's yarn at the very eclectic Petticoat Lane Emporium in, in Ramsgate. She dyes yarn inspired by books, films, TV and the environment and her labels feature her little dog Pippin.
Jibby Russo's is a family run business from Essex. They sell gorgeous bags and notions. And I love the cat in the hat bags. And they have such a lovely range of different fabrics to choose from, really gorgeous. Shannon at Blue Fern Yarns is another local vendor based in Norwich. She sells hand dyed yarn as well as bags, needles, hooks, and notions. Just filming the gorgeous little sweaters that they've got as a decoration to showcase the yarn on the stall. We had a lovely chat with Shannon's mum and spotted these. Oh my goodness, I have to make these. They are, it's called Milo the Hipster Cat. And I think it's by DIY Fluffies. I will correct myself on the screen if I'm wrong. And I will link it underneath. But their little hands come out of the pockets and the hoods come down. Oh, adorable. Also love this blanket. The Slow Yarn Spinner is Ruth. She's locally based in Norwich, providing spinning workshops, kits, courses and fibre. We were getting a little bit weary at this point, so I wasn't as good at filming stuff. We were thoroughly perked up at the next stall though, Wensleydale Longwall, by both the lovely women that we met there running the stall and by the cake that they shared with us. Based in the Yorkshire Dales, they sell beautiful, pure Wensleydale Longwall yarns, as well as patterns and gifts. And please make sure you go and Google what a Wensleydale Longwall sheep looks like because they are the business. Ooh. Do you want to go for the star because you were Starry Eyes Alley before yeah. you were oh, yeah. Little I'm Drops on, of you on Instagram, yeah. Do you know earlier when I said I didn't film the other punch needle vendor? Well that was a lie. I totally forgot that I did. <laughs> so the modern crafter is sisters Rachel and Siobhan. They sell beginner friendly punch needle and embroidery kits which as you can see are so beautiful, so fun. I can't wait to try this. And they also now sell their own 100% British wool, especially for punch needle. The very last stall of the day for us was the little grey girl. Gem sells gorgeous handmade bags, hand dyed yarn and notions and has been in the business since 2015 so really knows her stuff. This cow is the Gems in the Moss Crochet Cow by Sophie Hurden who you saw right at the beginning and this sample was actually made by my friend Ali so what a perfect way to finish. And perhaps one of my most favourite things was the little knitted bunny wearing the crochet along cardigan with a ribbon. Everyone who made this cardigan got a ribbon when they arrived. Adorable. We're leaving so late that it's literally just about three cars, five cars left in the field. <laughs> and I think they're mainly vendors. <laughs> What's the time, Dad? It is five o'clock. It's five o'clock. And we have just exited, although we decided to leave at about four o'clock. But then I ended up having to go and find more people and talk to more people and chat to more people. And oh, it's been a lovely hour of leaving. Right, that was an amazing day, wasn't it? Yes. What did you think of your first yarn show, Dan? I loved it. Oh, hang on. Four hours? That it's because it's taking us through central London, that's why. It's not going to take us four hours to get home. I'm looking that way. Oh, there's lots more cars up there. I feel a bit better now. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to go out through this gate. I think that's about right. Well, we've got to find our way out now. So, should we do a sort of show debrief either when we get home or tomorrow? Whenever. I'll show you what I bought. Right now, we're going to go and stop somewhere to get some. 
thing to drink on the way home, some water or some fizzy pop. Yeah. <laughs> and listen to the radio. Ah, ah exit this way. What a lovely day. What a lovely day. It's been a couple of days since the fabulous East Anglia Yarn Festival. It's now Monday. This is the first time I've had to sit down and do a bit of post-show punditry. Dan is upstairs working. And I thought I'd go through what uh, I bought. Oh, there's a man outside in high biz getting something out the back of a van. Could be for us, could be for next door. The excitement. Uh, so I thought I'd show you what I bought. Uh, some of them are going to be for prizes for the podcast, so that's quite exciting. So first of all, I just want to say I went up to uh, Helen, lovely Helen, who I met for the first time at Giddy Yarns, and I said, I watch your podcast, and if you say that to Helen, you get one of her badges that says, I'm a Giddy Knitter. <laughs> and she very kindly gave one to Dan as well, so I've got two do you know what? I need a proper yarn show bag and um oh, my name's gone right out my head. Come on, think, think, think. Crochet designer, really famous for doing crochet sock. Vicky Brown. The actual Vicky Brown was there. And I bought from her a yarnivore badge, which I think I've now bashed up a bit in my bag, but never mind, it's still shiny. So I got a yarnivore badge, but she was also selling like tote bags and stuff and hoodies and t-shirts. So I'm wondering if I should have got one of her bags. I've written down some notes because it was, I felt like it was like a gigantic fabulous party where I spoke to so many people and I went on the way home, I wrote down as much as I could remember in my poor Swiss cheese brain, perimenopause Swiss cheese, Swiss cheese brain. So I wrote down as much as I can so I can remember who we spoke to, but I've probably missed loads of people out. So if we said hello to each other and I don't mention you, it's just, because I'm utterly rubbish and my brain can't hold information. But I know that I've got to remember to say hello to lovely Martha, who was there with her mum, and she watches the vlogs um, and the podcasts, and I'll try and get Lilia and Phoebe to say hello to you um, when I do April vlogs as well. It was so lovely to meet you both, and thank you so much for coming to say hello. Uh, Sue Dale, the Sue Dale from the comments was there. That was amazing. Sue has commented on my videos for so, so long. And I think she was there with Caroline of Let's Just Crochet, who I've met before. That's next door's dog now barking at the man in the high vis who's delivering parcels. If you can hear that, I apologize. Uh, I got to meet lovely Jill, uh, Karen McDonald, who I speak to on Instagram all the time, and her lovely, lovely husband, Derek. We had a nice chat with them. Karen from the Stitches and Jacks podcast was there with her daughter. I accosted Martin from the Knit365 vlog. <laughs> vlog. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so sorry, Martin. I don't know if he watches, but if you are, sorry I pounced on you out of nowhere. Um, we said hello to Shannon at Blue Fern Yarn and her lovely mum was there. So we ended up chatting to Shannon's lovely mum for ages. So that was really, really nice. Um, Ellie, Craft House Magic, who is just a bundle of joy. And we got to meet her lovely baby boy, Jensen. Uh, so that was really, really nice. We sat and uh, felt envious of people getting boxes of chips, which is what eventually led us to go and get the chips, which were amazing. Uh, I met up with Kate, who I met up with at Waltham Abbey earlier this year, so that was really lovely, and she was doing a uh, Sophie Swans class on Tunisian crochet, which she seemed to really enjoy, and it was lovely to spend the day with you, Kate, and uh, eat chips together. Everything seems to come back to chips, doesn't it? And of course we, uh, Flick and Sophie Swan, who I've just mentioned, hello. You weren't at the yarn show, were you? She, of course she needs to come and sit on me because it's I've got yarn on me and it's inconvenient. By she, I mean this person. You're not our cat, are you? No. But she's going to sit on my lap whilst I'm talking. Uh, yeah, where was I? Um, Ali and Maddie. Maddie uh, Ali it had a pattern in the show brochure and we chat on Instagram quite often and her daughter is pen pals with my Phoebe because they're the same age. Uh, so that was lovely, they were able to hand deliver Phoebe's next letter. 
and I had a lovely long chat with the ladies at the Wensleydale Longwall stand and uh, we got some birthday cake so it was a special birthday being celebrated so thank you for that ladies that was lovely and also got to meet um, Fanny Do Makes as well from the Fanny Do Makes podcast so I've only just recently started watching uh, so I saw her and I was like I'm sure I know her and then I realised it's because I'd watched her on YouTube didn't know her at all and there were so many other really 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 lovely people who we ended up just chatting to it just took forever to get round because it was like a big party it was amazing it was just and Dan loved it he loved every minute every time someone came up and gave him a hug and said it's Dan he was just like if he had hair he'd be flicking it left right and center but you don't want to know all that do you you want to know what I bought so Let's just flash it all at you. This is my birthday present from Dan. This was in the Fibre Workshop. Um, this is Norfolk Horn Yarn, uh, which is a rare breed, and she dyes it all with plants. And she dyes, a, I don't think all the plants, but she dyes a lot of the plants that she dyes with, she grows herself as well. So we had a lovely chat with her about her process, and um, I'm not sure how well the colour's going to come up, but it's a really lovely, rich emerald green why are you licking my arm that's weird and i love it and i wanted to get it because i could just see this making the most lovely uh lacy tam lacy sort of berry so i got three just to be sure uh, but dan actually got these for me as an advanced birthday present so i have to give them to him and forget about them i've got a, a very aesthetic can of diet coke here you're gonna go up there are you well, now I have an aesthetic cap. Do you want me to move my phone so you can sit on the cushion? Okay. So, you would have seen me very excitedly meeting Kelly Lay for the first time with Lay Family Yarn. And I picked up from her, uh, she was selling the most bargainous, uh, beautiful bits bags. So, they're absolutely full of beautiful Lay Family Yarn mini skeins um, and she was selling these at the show for £20 a bag. I can't remember how much they said was in here. I think it's about 200 grams, I think. I'm not sure. I haven't weighed it. But I got this as a surprise because I have just published episode 98 of my podcast, which means in a couple of episodes time I'll be at 100, which seems worth celebrating. And I thought I'd do a little giveaway. So this is going to form part of the giveaway prize. I got that. I also, as part of the giveaway, from the lovely Erin and her husband at uh, Henny Penny Makes, I got uh, these minis. So you get a plain one, a tonal one, and a speckly one. She had all different ones of these. They're called Gnome Bundles. And inside the label here, there are details of a pattern to make a little knitted gnome. And she had them all up on her stand. And they were gorgeous and this is enough to make a knitted gnome so what I was going to do is get the pattern of choice because I think there's a few different ones that these these all work with and whoever wins it I will buy you the pattern as well to go with the yarn so that's going to be um, a prize as well you really want to be involved don't you then uh, these are presents now so it's very important that my one of my besties Becky and my mum uh, you both need to look away and skip forward to the time that I'm putting on the screen now. Actually, no, I won't be able to do that because I won't know until I've finished editing. So I will put a link underneath in the description box that says Mum and Becky, jump forward to the time I've put. Otherwise, you're going to spoil the surprise. So for Becky, I picked her up uh, some Neon Pop Speckly Yarn from Lay Family Yarn. She loves neon pops. She's a relatively new crocheter and yeah, she's always attracted to the, to the neon. So when I saw this, it's DK weight. It's called Rainbow Drops from Lay Family Yarn. So that is for Becky's birthday that's coming up in April. I'm trying to put it somewhere now where I won't get covered in cat hair because she just sat on me and shedded everything all over me. And then this is for my mum. So make sure you're looking away, Mum. Her birthday's also in April. It's a lot of birthdays at this time of year. So from gorgeous Helen, who I met for the first time at Giddy Yarns, I got one of her sock sets, one of her self-striping sock sets. So I got this one. I don't know if it has a name. 
Oh, red sky at night. Oh, I love that because my mum always says that. I didn't realise that's what it was called. She had all samples of them knit up so you could see how the stripes worked. And I chose this one because it's just my mum's colours. It's a lot of purple and blues in there. And you get the mini with it as well for heels and, toe, heels and cuffs and toes or however you want to do it. Um, so that's 20 grams and 50 grams. She also did them as 100 grams as well. But I think this will be plenty for my mum. Because she really likes her hand knit socks now and she wears them. So that's for my mum's birthday. Oh, by the way, this is, look, this is my, oh, I'm going to keep this forever. I love it. I was too scared to wear it because I felt, I felt a bit self-conscious. Look, I feel like I need to wear it when I'm filming. <laughs> I love it. Maybe I'll wear it now, just while we're having a chat. It's all right to wear it at home, isn't it? Oh no, now I look like I'm going to work. No, I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> Okay, so this was from, I think this was Castleview, Castle View Yarns I picked this up, lovely Jen. I got some uh, little sewing labels to put on my bags because the dodgy bag mail is coming up. So I thought what would be better on a dodgy bag than a perfectly imperfect label. So I think there's about 10 in here. Uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, there's at least 10 in here. Loads. So yeah, they're just little sewing labels. And they look like that. How cute is that? Love it. Oh, also from Henny Penny Makes, I picked up a couple of postcards. One's gonna go with the giveaway and one's for me. There we go. And the big treat was, this is a treat to me from me. An early birthday present, if you like. I could save it to my birthday, but I won't be able to because I'm too excited to try it. There were two stalls doing punch needle crafts, uh, which is something I've never seen in person before. So we had a little bit of a demonstration from the lovely lady at Simple Crafted Life. And I loved her designs. I loved how the, the uh, yarn that you use for it feels. I liked the look of the process. I just loved everything about it. I said to her, how do you actually do it? She said, well, you kind of trace the design on. Uh, you get everything you need in the kit and you trace the design on and then um, you basically colour it in with the wool. So she said, and I said, so it's like colouring in, but with the punch needle. And she was like, that's exactly what it's like. And I was just like, where's my money? <laughs> Handing it over. So I got this and I can't wait to have a go at this. So that was my big treat to myself. And that was it. Relatively restrained, only one thing for me, uh, and two gifts and two giveaways. So it was nice to be able to spend a bit of money. You always want to support people at the shows. Obviously you can't with everyone. I didn't film everyone because it was such an amazing show. I think it's one of the best I've ever been to. And there were so many vendors I've never seen before. Um, and we were just chat, chat, chatting. Honestly, what a wonderful day it was. Now it's Monday, it's absolutely pouring with rain, my house is a mess and it's back to reality with a thump. Do I really have to tidy up? Can I not just sit and punch needle? But thank you so much for coming, uh, coming along with Dan and I to the Sanglia Yarn Festival. I'll definitely go again next year. I know my friend Becky wants to go as well, so it might be a, a, a weekend trip away maybe. That would be really good. Then we could go to the Friday night social that they do as well. Hmm, ooh, plans. I might text her now. Uh, yeah, so thank you for coming along. The cake was amazing. The brownies were amazing. The chips were amazing. The yarn was amazing. But most of all, the people and everyone we met um, were absolutely beautiful humans. There's nothing like a yarn show for restoring your faith in the world. <laughs> I'll see you in the next podcast. Until then, happy knitting, happy crocheting. Bye.